RC, I'll give you the floor first. What'd you make of all this? Well, what I make of it is now everybody's trying to backpedal and trying to make that the, the New York Jets system and, and, and where they are is better than what it really is. And you look at what he said. We were fielding, we were fielding calls for Jamal Adams. We weren't shopping him. I'm going to let you know, if you called my house and you were like, hey, Ryan, what's your wife's name? Yanka, yeah, we love the way that she cooks. We love the way that she takes care of your family. Here is what we have to offer for you. They're I'm not hanging the phone up because there is no... <laughs> offer that is going to be good enough for me to fill the call. And the other thing that he didn't do, he's talking about a simple miscommunication. The one thing we've always known about Trent Williams and the Washington is that he was not getting traded, that there was no value that they were going to take for him when, in fact, they really should have been because he doesn't want to play for this team. If Joe Douglas wants to get communication right, when Jamal Adams is sitting in your office, you say, when I get these calls, if these calls come because, we, because we've had public issues, we aren't taking them. You're our best player. We are here with you. We want to build with you, but that's not what Joe Douglas did. First of all, I hope if someone called Yonka offering a trade for you, she would hang up immediately, too. I'm sure she <laughs> I, would. Hey, if she's smart enough, she's going to listen to that trade. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, in this case, I think the problem is the world is changing around general managers, and you also have to understand that when your best player is upset, that's bad for your locker room. So, you need to manage those expectations. You're communicating to your players through the media every decision that you make, and you can't, you can't make a business you can't build a culture around upsetting your most your best players and the message that they're sending to the rest of their team is we're willing to shop you no matter how hard you yep. work because Le'Veon Bell's on the market he's their best offensive player he's running against eight nine ten twelve men boxes because mm -hmm. they can't throw the ball and and they're going to shop him right. they also have Jamal Adams who's their best defensive player and they're like we're fielding calls that's not a good feeling if you're someone on that team you're like I want to make a name for myself other, it doesn't the, matter they the, won't treat me and fair. the other part about this is, is this you're showing that the effort you put into each game it's something that we don't value. We don't right. value the fact that each and every game when we are losing, right. you are the player that's giving all-out effort. You are the player that's giving 100%. You are preparing you in the way that, that you need to prepare to win. And Jamal Adams puts out a tweet and an Instagram post last week about Le'Veon Bell saying before he got there, people said he wasn't a good teammate. And there was this narrative that was going on about Le'Veon Bell not being a good person. And Jamal Adams said that was completely false. So for those to be your two hardest working players, players that like each other, and they're the two guys you're shopping, yeah. Joe D., you didn't draft Sam Darnold. You didn't draft Jamal Adams. You didn't want Le'Veon Bell. But the dude you should be trying to get out of there is Sam Darnold. Feel that call, yeah. not the call on these two guys. Listen, and, and putting that piece of it aside, the, 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 try and fathom what their locker room must be like right now. This is also a franchise that was fining a player last week on the day, for being an unexcused absence on the day he was having surgery on his shoulder, which his doctor said he needed, and the team decided for whatever reason that he didn't. Right. So I, I never would have thought I'd say this, but the day Sam Darnold was diagnosed with mono. It's like the second best day of the season. That's like the second best day the Jets have had this the other, year. The other part is this, though, Greeny. They're going to play the Miami Dolphins. And right now, the Miami Dolphins are in a better place than the New York Jets because at least they know what they are. They said, you know what? We are terrible. We stink. We're going to get rid of all the good players and get as many draft picks as we can. The Jets are delusional. Right. They think they're doing things the yeah. right way. And you still stink. And you're in a worse place than they are. Yeah. And your quarterback got the kissing disease disease, and that's the second best day of your season. And at least the message is consistent in Miami. It's like, we're not going to win this year, but you guys are playing for your jobs. The message yeah. is not consistent here. The message is, play really hard, we might shop you. Yeah, the only thing that's worse than trying to lose is trying to win and being even worse <laughs> than the team that's trying to lose. <laughs> Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.